to know your point of view. There were over 200 paparazzi outside my house videotaping me through a window of an ambulance holding me down on a germer. I know now it was all premeditated. And a woman introduced the idea to my dad and my mom actually helped him follow through and made it all happen. It was all basically set up. There was no drugs in my system, no alcohol, nothing. It was pure abuse. And I haven't, haven't even really shared even half of it. It's kind of interesting how in the media, things are playing out that are speaking to issues that we talk about here in, you know, on these YouTube channels. It just so many things just rang true for me. I, you know, rang true not only for me, but for many, many stories that I've heard. It's just that she, you know, she's famous. So we all get to look at it and, and it, things are extreme because she is so wealthy and all that. And there could be so many things, more things hired to be done. You know, like she had all these nurses and she had, you know, all these situations. You know, the, the more outrageous things they could do because they had lots of money. But, you know, it only made the abuse work. This conservatorship that she was under was seriously just a crime because it was a kind of conservatorship that is not for someone who's working, not for someone who's going on tour, not for someone who's supporting a whole host of people. No, it's, it's for someone who doesn't work who is mentally disabled or who, who is elderly and the person is not going to get better. The person is not expected to get better. This is expected to be a lifelong thing. It was completely the wrong thing for her to ever have been in. And it's so extreme anyhow. The thing that just kept haunting me was when she kept saying, I didn't even do anything wrong. I mean, what did I do to deserve all this? I honestly, still to this day, don't know what really I did, but the punishment of, uh, my father, I wasn't able to see anyone. I knew in the deepest, deepest part of my core, I knew I'd done nothing wrong and I didn't deserve the way I'd been treated. I remember asking myself those same questions. What did I do to you? Like, what is it that everyone's so mad about? I, in my situation, I call him R, that was my husband. He was sort of the, the uh, ideal guy. You know, he was the one who gave everyone the story and then my narcissistic family just helped him act it out all out. My mom gave him the idea for the conservatorship and his friend, I think he just really like regrouped it and made such a really, really overhauling big deal out of it. And it was just really too much. I remember him always being in the office and um, my girlfriend was his assistant and they would just stay in there all day with the door shut and I was never if ever able to leave or go anywhere. Maybe in, in Brittany's case, the person, the idea person was Lou Taylor, who had, you know, who seemed to have a really vicious sense of wanting to take this vulnerable person and this vulnerability and run with it. And because apparently she did the same thing to Kanye, she did the same thing to Lindsay Lohan, and, or attempted to. So this is sort of her, her thing. She maybe looks for sort of an abusive situation and a vulnerable person and then tries to come in and see what she can work out, what she can make have happen. The most brutal thing about it was she was paying for it. She was paying for her own abuse. She was paying her abusers. She was a workhorse. They were working her to the bone so that they could keep controlling her and abusing her. When I couldn't have the keys to my car, no cash, no cigarettes, no door for privacy. It changed me, day, watched me change naked every day. I, I did work seven days a week. No weekends were off. They monitored what I ate. Um, from eight to six, I work. Sometimes at nine o'clock, I'd be able to watch a movie. It really was outrageous. And I absolutely believe every single word she says. I believe every single word she says. And I was not, you know, I'm not a Britney fan. I, I never owned any Britney music. I never, you know, I'm a little older than her target audience. I think she was going, kind of going for like preteens or something. And I don't go out to clubs and all that. So she wasn't really, you know, you know, I didn't listen to her music. And I really honestly didn't like her persona. I didn't like that she kind of talked in a baby voice and she tried to, you know, think that being stupid was cute and all that. I didn't like that. But what I see now is I see that that was put on to her and that was a survival thing that she learned to do that to play herself down for her father. She had to, she had to look meek and look like that for her father. I, that's clear as a bell now. And so she learned that as a, as a defense mechanism. She learned that as a coping strategy. 
the th everyone around her was a user. Everyone. The thing is, you can make a person go crazy. And you, you know, when you're a young mother and someone threatens to take your kids away or does take your kids away, it might make you a little crazy. And that's kind of what was happening with her. She had a, a moment where she, you know, her, she was thinking her kids were getting taken away. She had her heart broken and she reacted in a way that made her look questionable in public. I did the same thing. And you can, you know, I did a recent video on baiting. That, you know, that seems like what happened in that case. Someone just baiting and baiting and finally you lose it in a big public way. And, you know, if you don't know what's going on, and this is maybe the way you've been, you're, you've been raised all your life, you don't know what's happening. Of course, it makes sense to us now because we can look back and we can see everything. I didn't know anything until I had already made all the mistakes and lost everything and everyone that mattered to me that I had to show for my life. What happened in my case, and this happens a lot of the time, what happened in Brittany's case, is that she basically started waking up and realized that she had self-serving people all around her. And there was no one who was putting her needs first, or no one who really was caring about what she needed and what was in her best interest. Everyone was saying they were, but they weren't. And because if anyone had been doing that, it, her whole life would have looked a lot different. Her, she did not have any kind of normal uh, learning process. You know, where she didn't get to learn to be an independent grown up. So she had all these people controlling her. Then, all, then of course, she ended up with no control over anything. And the abuse was outrageous. I mean, there's some things that are really a big question mark. Like I don't know why they were withdrawing blood from her. How is there a God? Is there a God giving eight galls of blood weekly, not being able to stand up? I was so, so, so weak. And my family's at my beach house. I was scared, broken. You could keep her weak? I, that I didn't understand. Of course, she said, about, I wanted to use my feet, but I was too weak. And my family was out watching my kids run bases, so basically go to their baseball games, I'm guessing. And I could never go. And then I called them and they were at my beach house while I'm home in a chair too weak to stand up. Now, I don't understand what was going on there. I mean, that can't possibly be healthy. Why do you need, I mean, even if they, she was doing a drug test or something, but why would they need that much blood? There's, there's a few kind of question marks for me that I don't know. Like, um, it sounded like she didn't really know that there was a problem until she saw the Free Britney people protesting for her. Now, what I'm curious about is how did anybody know? Like, how did anyone know before Britney? Like, I thought that what happened was that the public all caught wind of it once Britney was started talking about it. But it sounds like the people knew about it before she did. And that kind of is what empowered her to start looking into things and challenging them. So that's kind of curious. If anyone knows what, how that all transpired, please let me know in the comments. She hasn't had anyone that she could trust in her whole life. There's been no one that she could trust. And it's, it's really, really tragic and sad. I relate to it. I relate to it very much, all too much. But it can be, I think, very isolating to be super, super famous. And it was interesting to hear her call herself an introvert. I think that's really interesting. I, I don't think that's that unusual either. I think that a lot of times people that perform, they seem like they would be extroverts, but I think that's their thing, and then they, they spend a lot of time alone. I really have a ton of respect for Brittany. I think that she is completely lucid. She knows what happened, and she's held on to her truth. And this becomes the way out of these situations, too, because you've been lied to, and you've even been lying, but you didn't know it for years and years and years. And the only way you can get through this is to, I call it, embrace reality. She called it something like needle and thread, sewing, you know, sewing herself together or something like that. But basically what it is is that you start to see that you have this inner strength in you, and you start to cling to Reality, not what anyone's saying. She said she quit going to her dad for answers. Thank heavens, because that was where the worst answers were going to come from. The most inaccurate, the most scary, the most, you know, he was really, I see him as quite evil. I see him as quite manipulative and bullying and, and evil. And I see, I see basically that her brother and sister and her mother, or I see that they're all envious of her. 
seemed like they were all envious of her and really liked it a little too much to see her be now the bad one, the scapegoat, and the one getting punished. I think that they all enjoyed it a little bit too much. It made any sense of what they were doing to me. And to me, it was like they secretly, honestly liked me being the bad one, like I was messed up, and they kind of just liked it that way. Otherwise, why weren't they outside my doorstep saying, baby girl, get in the car, let's go? What's so hard in most of these cases is that most people can't relate to this. You know, most people were raised by parents who loved them. Most people love their kids. Most people have a conscience. Thank heavens, right? When that's the case for you, you can't imagine what's happening over there. And, and what happens in that case is that the victim gets blamed. People, you know, speculate on, oh, you know, her dad was looking after her and there's probably just a whole bunch of stuff we don't know. I've heard lots of people say kind of things like that. You know, no, you know, I'm sure you'll see now, now that she's going to be all on her own, she's going to start coming undone again because, you know, her parents love her. They're trying to keep her safe. I don't see that at all. I don't see any evidence that that's what was happening here. And a loving family, you know, they could have helped her out with, you know, taking a power of attorney, helped her out, whatever, without doing all of this, without doing all of this. It's just, it just screams corruption. It screams bullying. It screams control freak we are getting these opportunities to publicly see what happens behind closed doors. That's what we're getting to see. And I also think that in Brittany's case, just like in Johnny Depp's case, that she needs to uh, air this out in public because if she's just trying to talk to those disordered people, I mean, imagine if Johnny Depp and Amber Heard was in private. What if it was all in private? He would not have been exonerated the way he was because people would not have thought that what happened really happened. They assumed that he did something, that it was, you know, that, that they were both at fault and all the things that people say that normal people experience. You know, it takes two to tango. There's two sides to every story. We know, because we got to listen to the whole story, that she was a bold-faced liar and he was being abused. He was an imperfect person who was vulnerable to being smeared. He never, he never attempted to look like the boy next door. He was a little bit rebellious. All those things that made him vulnerable to being portrayed a certain way. He didn't hide that he used drugs and all that kind of stuff. That was part of who he was. And so that made him easy to set up. And Marilyn Manson is another one that's going to be really hard for him because he really made himself look like that. And so, you know, it's easy to capitalize on that persona because Brittany had also her persona was this little girl kind of airhead dingbat and crazy that she was basically crazy. Just the ultimate thing that she is paying for all the abuse. I guess in a way, all of us in certain circumstances see that. I mean, I guess I did too. I paid for my ex-husband to, you know, do all the things he did for me as well. But, you know, it's just the, the, you know, the amount of staff, employees, and she, she was paying a lawyer that she didn't even trust. It just, it's just so sick and twisted. And you'd think that he, that there would be, there's some kind of crime committed there. It just seems like there's some kind of crime committed there. Brittany is, she's a compliant person. I think she grew up just trying to please people, trying to please people, not make any waves. And I think that she got very intimidated by her dad. And she knew no one had her back. And so she tried to get through by in this life by doing what she was told. Kevin Federline should keep quiet and thank Brittany every day for everything she's done for him. You know, the best thing that ever happened to him was Brittany Spears. That's for sure. You know, and I think Kevin said she had her art because that she really does love. That it, she was also uh, pushed to do it. I mean, she was pushed to do it. But I think she was naturally inclined for it and naturally loved doing it. Thank heavens. Thank heavens that she wasn't forced to do something she hated. I think that she really loved music and dancing and that's just what she was all about. I think she also really loved her kids and wanted to be a mother. I think that those two things were everything to her. And I very much empathize with what it is like when your kids have grown up, you didn't get to be the mother that you wanted to be because your life was torn into chaos. It's important to remember that, you know, this hasn't even been a year that she's processing it. Now, I was listening to um, another, a, a YouTube channel talking about Brittany. What they were saying was, she doesn't make any sense how she's like 
twirling around and doing her little shows and on her Instagram. And then all of a sudden she comes out with talking about this abuse, her abusive family. And, you know, like, I guess she, one day she was having a cup of coffee. She said, this coffee makes me, makes me remember that I couldn't have coffee. And she'll start going into that. And that these people were saying it was sort of disturbing how she just kept talking about it over and over again. And I totally understand what's happening there because she doesn't feel it's gone on for 15, 16 years. And she was silent for a long time because she didn't understand what was happening. She was ashamed. So she, she withdrew herself. She didn't talk to anyone because she didn't know what was happening. She wouldn't have known what to say. She didn't, you know, she just didn't get it. She blamed herself. And then when she started kind of cluing in, she didn't know who she could trust. She is just now getting to a point where maybe she's got the support of this new husband. She's a distant, distant enough from her family to start feeling a little bit empowered. And she feels a need. And there is actually a need. I have a book about this. There is actually a need that for healing our trauma, we need to have our story. We need to make a testimony. We need to have a testimony where we say, this is what happened to me and have at least one person hear it and validate it. You need to say your story to someone and have it validated. Have them validate that, yeah, that sounds terrible. That's, that's abuse. That is abuse. That shouldn't have happened, you know, like that. And Brittany's getting that, which is really good. But Britney Spears' mother, she sounds just like my mother sounded, just exactly like my mother sounded, about how she cared and, you know, how she loves Britney and how she was there for her all the time and, and all of this. That, that is not true. She simply wasn't there all the time. She, she didn't stand up for her daughter. She didn't, she wasn't there protecting her. There was nobody protecting her. Everyone was using her. I feel for her about that because the day you realize that is a really, really sad day. Now you keep seeing it over and over again and that, that, that knowledge comes in waves and sometimes it just crashes down on you. And you had your life of, of believing that this was love and that this was a family and all that. And then when you start seeing it for what's really going on, it is crushing. And you think about all the things in your past and how you were this little kid and all the things you tried to do. And, and it is really sad. And that's when you got to start having compassion for yourself. I don't think that it would do Brittany any good to be angry at these people or, you know, to try and get back at them. The best thing she can do, and I think she will do it, is keep her distance from all of these people cut them out of her life, and just move on with her life and take care of herself. She's got the world by the tail. She she looks great. She's super talented. She's got plenty of money. And, you know, they've all been living off of her. So they better hope that they saved enough money because that's over now. And she's got she's taken herself with her. So she has all the tools to reinvent herself or, re, you know, create a new life for herself. And they've all lost their meal ticket. They've all lost the best thing they had going. I, I hope she sees that clearly. It seems like she's starting to. And I hope that this guy that she's with is a good guy. I really, really do. And I hope that she's got some kind of friend in her life now, someone she could trust. Trace, trace.